Good morning, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Sunday, August 4th, 1021 AM Mountain Time, 2019. You're looking at Himawari 8 AHI showing one of multiple VEI4 eruptions happening over the last 48 hours in the gray, in the circle. We're talking about Uluwan. Unrest has once again escalated and a new phase of major eruptive activity occurred between 10 and 11 UTC, sending a mushroom cloud to 19 kilometers. Multiple VEI-4s. Almost impossible to find anything on it in the media, but nine killed, dozens injured in Ohio in the second U.S. mass shooting in 24 hours. Almost 30 people murdered by guns. The same time this is happening. Hmm. Nothing to see here. They will come for your guns. Rising Great Lakes erode shoreline. Create uncertainty. Yeah, this is cosmic ray increase. You're living the cosmic ray maximum. They're only going to continue to increase. I was just out there 48 hours ago. I saw the flooding. They continue to build in these places that are flooding along these lakes. Holy hailstorm, grapefruit size hail batters Edmonton area as predicted. Hail is increasing in intensity, in size, in frequency. Alberta hailstorms in 2019 already almost double yearly average for the province. And the size of the hail and the danger is also increasing. Here's a picture of a large hailstone that dropped in northwest Edmonton during Friday night's powerful storm. If that hit you in the head, you'd be dead. Injuries were reported. Cosmic rays increased gradually worldwide. The Northeast U.S. has the most cosmic ray increase over the last three years, where the Southwest has the least. But they're increasing everywhere. Have we ever had a year with temperatures of minus 20 and 100 or higher? Well, of course we have. In fact, the hottest year in North America was back in 1934, by far, where over half of the states were recording temperatures of 100 or higher on the same day. And the cold extremes as well. It's nothing new. Read the article. Locally heavy rainfall in Florida in the southeast coast. Excessive heat in the southwest. Yeah, it's the desert in the middle of the summer. Pretty normal. Locally heavy rainfall will affect portions of Florida and the southeast U.S. through Sunday. Meanwhile, monsoon moisture will bring showers and thunderstorms to the southern and central Rockies over the next few days. Elsewhere, heat advisories and excessive heat warnings are in effect for parts of the southwest, which, by the way, is where Death Valley and the desert is in the summer. Potent Antarctic front to bring heavy snow to New Zealand and Australia. Adding to the South Island's winter misery of late, another potent Arctic front is set to hit New Zealand this weekend, dumping heavy snow as low as 200 meters, while an even stronger front builds south of Australia. We'll be watching this closely. Remember the bomb said it would never snow. Radiation alert Portland, Maine, nearby Concord, New Hampshire, also spiking wildly. Low levels of radiation throughout the Northeast are being reported. It could be the waning magnetosphere adding more gamma radiation right through your body. Come take a look at the counts. Come take a look at the paper. This is where we would expect increased radiation to show up first and evolution to begin. Of all places, the Northeast. Tsunami warning lifted after 6.9 magnitude earthquake strikes Indonesia 36 hours ago. At least one person died of a heart attack and four others were injured after a 6.9 magnitude struck off the shore of Indonesia Friday night, according to a report. Indonesia's disaster agency issued a tsunami warning after more than 1,000 residents. The warning was lifted uh, after two hours, thankfully. There's some damage. But breaking news, Fukushima earthquake. Japan hit by a 6.2 tremor just hours ago in the same prefecture of Fukushima. We're going to try to play this, but it's not going to play. Let me see what we can do up here. Give me a minute.
Bear with me. Well, that was less than amazing. The 6.2 magnitude earthquake has hit off of Fukushima in Japan. It was also felt in the capital city of Tokyo, 250 kilometers away. The epicenter of the quake struck at 7.23 p.m. local time, was off the coast of Fukushima prefecture, and measured at a depth of 50 kilometers, the Japan Meteorological Agency said. No immediate reports of damage, no tsunami alert issued. We'll be watching this closely. Seismic update. There's that quake. 6.3. Already downgraded. 5.0, Port Blair, India. And we have fear mongers in Manhattan, Montana, probably predicting that Yellow Yellowstone's going to blow any moment. 5.2 in Unalaska, Alaska. Wow. Figured that one out. And a relatively significant quake in Riverton, New Zealand, kicking off a 5.0. No information coming in right now. We do have a blood echo here in Bolivia, so let's watch this region closely for a larger quake in the next 24 hours. Heads up, hours of powers. Natural disaster hits West New Britain. It's being hard hit with VEI-4s. Still dealing with the aftermath of the Mount Uluwan eruption of June 26th. The volcano has spewed ash again three times in the last 48 hours into the sky. 63,000 feet. Another large eruption to 19 kilometers back on August 3rd. There's the plume from Himawari. And then we have this report coming out just moments ago today. Uluwan erupting again to 45,000 feet. VEI-3, VEI-4. Multiple stratospheric, slight stratospheric injections occurring here. We also have Sabankaya puffing to 25,000 feet. Dukono puffing today. Popo, Ibiko, Kadiminsk to 14,000. Sabankaya to 25,000. Awu to 6,000. Stromboli, frequent Strombolian ex explosion. Swanosima. Sange API, intermittent volcanic ash. Reventador. Ducono to 6,000. Samankaya again to 25,000. Aso in the mix. Kadiminch to 17. Uluwan, 45,000. Nevados de Chilon. Puff to 100 feet. Well, puff, puff, pass. That sounds like an uptick. Uptick much? Deriving the solar activity cycle modulation on cosmic ray intensity observed by Nagoya Muon detector from October 70th until December 2012. Yes. Come check it out. There it is. Showing the cosmic ray maximum here. You see the increase in cosmic rays through time from 1970 to 2012. So come check the math yourself. We're not making it up. Solar activity imprints and tree ring data from northwest Russia. This paper coming out is amazing. It has... Analyze tree ring chronology from 1445 to 2005 from the peninsula of Western Russia. They use spectral analysis or some form of data crunching. And in polar tree ring data, significant periodicities associated with 5.4, 11.7, and 22 years were found. In fact, polar tree growth response on solar impacts is more pronounced during and around grand minimas of solar activity. This is due to the cosmic ray effect, increased flooding, yes, which in increases tree ring size. Now, cycles of 11 and 22 years were persisted in tree ring cosmic ray connections even during the Maunder minimum when sunspots were practically absent. So these cycles continue even as we drop off the cliff in intensity on the 11 and 22 year, old pa year pattern. Now, connection between tree rings and sunspots was higher during other grand minimas, the Dalton and Gleisberg, and just after the Maunder. So these grand minimas affect the climate. Come read the abstract. I'll leave you the links. Learn something. 
If you don't know how to read, get someone to read it for you. American Relative Sunspot Number, Monthly Averages, Time Series. I'll leave you links to the lasp.colorado.edu site where you can get some information on sunspots, total solar irradiance from source, and other excellent uh, data sets that you may want to look at. You see the us dropping off into grand minima here. Six asteroids are headed for Earth this month, and one is bigger than the Empire State Building. Several near-Earth asteroids will be heading in our direction this month, but experts say there's no reason to worry. Yes, we love those experts. Scientists at NASA are tracking six asteroids that will be heading in our direction of our planet during the next few weeks. One of them is larger than the Empire State Building. Any one of these may be trailing other objects that we haven't located that may hit an ocean, cause a massive tsunami, and kill most of the people on the coast. But they're not telling you about that. Now, first things first, take a deep breath. Experts are assuring you that there's no reason to panic. Yeah, there never is. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance when an asteroid hits the ocean. Yes, an asteroid that's almost 1,900 feet in diameter is zipping at a speed of 10,000 miles per hour, capable of causing massive destruction, will pass by on August 10th, according to CNN. Are you prepared? The Climate Revolution, The Grand Solar Minimum, the new book by David Dubine. Just did an interview last night with him. It was refreshing. It was fun. It was informative. Get the book. Do it now. Links below. The book is amazing. I'm going to give you a sneak peek right here. Look at it. It is chock full of information. Hundreds of pages of all the pertinent information that you want on Grand Solar Minimum Preparedness, the science behind it, the predictions, the 10-step climate revolution essentials, and all the links to thousands of thousands of pages of information to help you survive and thrive in the future. Get the book. Get the knowledge. That's a boom. I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. The time is now to prepare for the future. We love each and every one of you. Thank you to our new Patreons, our one-time donors, all of our subscribers. And for you that share these videos, without you sharing these videos, we won't grow. Be safe, everyone.